It, and it's it's an interesting disconnect with what we're seeing from the government elsewhere. So I spoke to Murray Watt just a moment ago, the Minister for Agriculture. He's at Beef Week in Rockhampton. He's talking about the exporters being optimistic about the relations with China, getting back on an even keel, uh, and the government doing that leader to leader and, and getting, you know, things, uh, some sort of rapprochement happening there. But on the other side, you see these dangerous manoeuvres. It's a, it's a weird parallel. It's a very narrow path that the government has to walk. On the one hand, the big strategic issue is normalising our diplomatic relations, uh, restoring uh, export markets for Australian exporters, and I think the government has done a very good job in going down both those paths, and yet, at the same time, it has to be able to express its absolute disgust, really, at this sort of provocative, dangerous behaviour that puts Australian lives at risk. That is a very narrow path for the government to walk. I don't know how much more we'll see publicly about the sort of protests they've made, but I would imagine the embassy in Beijing and, indeed, the Chinese embassy here in Canberra would have heard all about it. Yeah, but, the, again, it goes to the approach out of Beijing that they want to smooth things over on the one hand. You've got the Minister for Trade developing good relations with Don Farrell, for example, uh, all, all smooth, but then they want to give you a bloody nose elsewhere. Yeah. Well, uh, just last week, Kieran, uh, the Australian, US and Japanese governments made an announcement that they would provide enhanced support to the Philippines in confronting China's aggression, aggressive actions against the Philippines' uh, maritime elements. Um, you could perhaps draw a direct line from this announcement last week, we're joining together, we're pushing back, and then the following week, lo and behold, we have an incident that says, don't forget, we're the PLA Air Force, we can do, we can do stuff when, where we want to. And, you know, I'm not saying you can absolutely draw that connection, but it wouldn't be a stretch to yeah. say there's some connection. Well, the timing the timing is there, isn't the it? The timing is there. I want to ask you about the recent developments we've seen on India, mm. because one of the countries that we've been building our ties with through the Quad and, and other things is, is India as, as one of the strong democracies in the region, mm. and yet they're causing us a few headaches via espionage here. <laughs> Well, that's right. The, um, the cornerstone, I think, of Australia's foreign policy right now is the Indo-Pacific, a free, open and prosperous Indo-Pacific. There is no Indo-Pacific without India. And so Australia has been working overtime to make sure that its diplomatic relationship is in good order, the economic relationship is good, in good order, partly as a counterbalance to trade with China, being able to diversify markets. But, of course, also, uh, Kieran, we have these enormous person-to-person -person ties. They're about... I think 850,000 Indian-born Australians at present. That's gone up half a million in 10 years. We're an attractive, attractive migration destination. All these things are in one pot. And on the other hand, there's a nest of spies that have been expelled for conducting espionage against Australian defence and, and, and other targets. So again, Other democracies have had issues too with um, Canada, for example. Canada's had a major problem, much bigger than ours, in fact, because there was an assassination of a Sikh uh, leader in uh, Canada called Hardeep uh, Singh Nijjar, and he was assassinated uh, or murdered, allegedly, uh, with some connection to agents of the Indian government. And that is what was said by the Canadian Prime Minister in Parliament, that there were, quote, credible allegations that the death of Mr Singh was connected to, quote, unquote, agents of the Indian government. And so that led to a tit-for-tat expulsion of people uh, there. And in Australia, we see, um, again, insofar as we're both large migrant communities, we've got large Indian communities, and some of these uh, issues, as we've seen elsewhere, can travel with diaspora communities. 